So, this is Sean, and Sean's going to talk about APIs, and also uh -huh. maybe give you a copy of his game. I've got two copies of the two game. Two copies of the game, William. I don't know how he's going to do that, and he doesn't know how he's going to do that. So, if you want to give it, I reckon if you clap louder than anyone else, Sean might give you a copy. So, if you give it up for Sean now. My presentation is called Messing Around with Real Time with X ray APIs. And we're going to talk about the. Yeah, I know, I couldn't think of anything really good to be done. Right, so who am I? Um, I'm Sean Oxbrain, and I'm actually a team. I am the most useless human being, and he has no idea of how the concept of power is. Um, I don't really know anything. I just come up with ideas, and they just happen, and stuff. It's cool. And I really like curry, as, as Chris Lawson knows, because he took me to Brick Lane and I almost fell down crying. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most beautiful experience of my entire life. Um, I'm managing director at Apron Games and I'm a graduate staff member at Lincoln. And what I do is I make all the gaming jams and all the gaming jams and help all the students make games, or the ones that actually want to learn. Which is nice. Um, this is a guy covered in bees and he cares not for them. Um, <laughs> But bees are cool, and we should care about them, because they're going extinct, because we can't see them anymore, so we care about bees. So what did we do? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, me and Kieran, um, who isn't here today, um, we make games using APIs mostly, and we made a game called Hashtag Dungeon, which is a dungeon crawler, similar to like Bunny Isaac and Original Legend of Zelda, but it uses Twitter. And everything that is in the game is stored online via tweets. So each dungeon is a hashtag, and it generates them based on the dungeons and it has links. That's a weird sort of encoded tweets. And it was just an academic research project. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. But here is why we did it. So um, it was a weird social experiment, and it was a fair academic research we did. So uh, we wanted to see whether or not people would be willing to sort of misuse Twitter and put loads of just random strings of information on it. And it turns out a lot of people did, and it was quite nice. Um, and how people would react to it. So we wanted to see if someone was going to stick loads of these like random strings up on Twitter, would someone look at it and go, what the hell are you doing? Are you mad? This is crazy. I've had like, people going, is it, are you, have you been hacked by a bot? There's a bot side just posting random stuff on your Twitter. Or people have gone, that sounds interesting. Can I get a copy of the game? Which has been a really nice viral marketing. Um, also, the novelty value of it, I was, just, I was just like, can we make a dungeon crawler that uses Twitter? And then Kieran was like, maybe. We could use it for a university project. And I was like, okay then. And we did it. And it was really nice. And it probably will never ever get done again, because it's really weird. Um, and uh, we wanted, it, the cool thing is, anyone can make a dungeon, regardless of whether or not they have the game. If they could look at the code and go, oh, I see how like a G is a goblin and stuff they can actually just sit there and type out tweets and send them out and then the game will pass them in and then a dungeon will be created regardless of whether or not they've got the game. Um, and yeah, because we did, so we could. This is a uh, screenshot of Wikipedia taken this morning of Machine Rule, which is the concept in comic science fiction films where machines have taken over the universe and basically humans are now like, enslaved by machines <coughs> and turn into it stuff. So what did we find out from Hashtag Dungeon? We found out... <laughs> it all makes sense in a minute. Do not panic. This is how my brain works. <laughs> so don't... Yeah, this is how my brain works. So just move it from different things. It'll make sense in a minute. You go, oh, I see what he was doing there. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah, so um, the use of Twitter actually made people start using Twitter more. There were a lot of people who never actually touched Twitter, who then started playing the game, and they actually realized how good it was for talking with people. So they started using it a lot more. And some people made like Dungeon Master accounts. So they'd say that they're like at Lord Death Pain or something. Or whatever. <laughs> and then they'd sort of role play with other Dungeon Masters and sort of send messages to one another. And they were using it for like different, they were using it for communication. So one of them would like do something really cool in the dungeon. Then the other person would tweet back to them and say, that was really nice. How did you do that? What, what, sort, of, what, what sort of imagination do you have to do those certain things? Uh, one thing we did uh, when we were doing like the bit of research was you can put a letter after certain enemies and it will imbue them with special powers. So one of them, if you type, a, for example, you've got a goblin, which is G. If you type a Z after that, 
then it will imbue them with the power of electricity, and then lightning will come shooting out in different places. We didn't have that in the game editor, and about two weeks into the testing, what we did was we actually went in, me and Kieran made a room in two dungeons where we imbued loads and loads of things with the power of electricity. People started playing, and they got into these rooms and they were like, what the hell is that? That's amazing, how have they done that? And then they went onto Twitter, found a tweet, realized, actually, hold on a minute, what's that? There's a Z there, that's not normal. That's really weird. Okay, let's try that out ourselves. Went into Twitter, started messing with the tweets. Then everyone, within a week, with everyone in every single dungeon had like zappy goblins everywhere. And I was like, oh, what have we done? What have we done? Here is a picture of an angry bird. It's angry. Um, they should probably make a game about it. Um, Birds are cool because you can sort of like in invoke different emotions with them. So like if you think about a raven, you think about like sadness and sort of like they, they think about death and that kind of thing. It's all like the ravens and stuff. And other birds, different things. So if you think of a blue tit, kind of happy, kind of nice. Very great, a friendly bird, I guess. You see it in like animated films just flying around being happy. <laughs> what are we doing now? Um, <laughs> We're still working on making updates for Hashtag Dungeon. Uh, we're currently working on the Christmas update, so I've got like a Santa boss which comes in and throws like exploding presents at you. And it's like we're changing the slime so you all like the presents, and then we smash them open, and the presents come out when they attack you and stuff like that. Um, we're also working on Twitter gods, so we're going to have nine gods in the game, which is kind of related to your <laughs> tour player, Jenny. Um, and so they're going to sort of be bots on Twitter that will talk to one another. And if you send a tweet to one of them, say, Hi. Don't mind us going, That's fine. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so um, they're going to be bots and they're going to actually like, tweet to one another and be like, I will destroy you. And you're like, you are the most evil god and I'm the best god in the world. And you can send a tweet to them saying, please can you imbue my dungeon with like a power? And they might occasionally go, all right then. And so they'll send out a tweet and then the um, server will get that and they'll say, okay, for the rest of the day, this dungeon's going to be twice as hard. Or this dungeon's going to drop more loot. Or this dungeon is now going to have a shrine somewhere in it, which you can use to pray to that god and then get like a, a buff for the rest of the dungeon. Which should be quite nice. And the fact that you can actually see them bickering amongst one another on Twitter should be quite interesting as well. And occasionally they'll just, they'll just decide to do a dungeon just because gods are a bit flippant like that. <laughs> um, and we're working on a couple of upcoming games with some other students at Lincoln because Kieran's third year project is hashtag dungeon and we had so much fun showing that at different places that we wanted to try and get that experience for other students. So now I sort of like pitched seven different ideas and was like, give these to students, see what they do, and then I'll help out and we'll get published again. So that's what we're doing right now. So games using APIs, these are stuff that our friends are working on and stuff that we're working on at the minute. So this is Fear Square. This was developed by the LISC at, um, uh, at Lincoln University, uh, which uses police data and Foursquare to convince you to get more dangerous locations. So you get like a, you get like a score depending on where you go. Like if there's a violent knife crime somewhere, you go, we'll go there. Yeah, that's <laughs> you are this is amazing. This is brilliant. Uh, so it's a game. It's, it's, it's quite interesting. London high scores. There's a reason I get really anxious whilst I'm here. Because I know. <laughs> Uh, Bluetooth, also developed by the LISC. Uh, this was a game that only works when you're in airports. And the idea is that you um, are a smuggler trying to get <laughs> <laughs> And um, you, you find someone who's sitting like it, sitting, sitting in the house, sitting there, minding their own business with their phone on, and they've probably got Bluetooth on, and you're going to sit next to them and you're just like, just press a couple of buttons. And then you have to wait for them to go through, check out, go through like the um, security gates and you sort of walk through like... <sighs> you get to the other side and then hopefully they won't have got them discovered that they have something on their phone. <laughs> but um, then you find them on the other side and you get a score for like how much stuff you managed to get through on their phone. So like their phone will vibrate and say, you've just had some stuff put on you, but they, they won't notice that until afterwards. 
It's really dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's hilarious. But yeah, um, so this is a game we're working on with um, Ashley Blake Hood. He's Schlei BH on um, Twitter. Um, um, and this one we're going to be using uh, real time weather data based on locations in the UK. So you play as a medieval surf trying to survive in Britain back in the feudal system where everything was a bit nastier and you get by wolves and bears and stuff. And you can die of dysentery at any moment. <laughs> um, and so uh, we're going to have it. So um, if you decide, we're working on Lincoln at the minute because that's where the uh, university is based. If you decide to go to live in a small village near Lincoln, and you're playing the game, and you're sort of like tending your crops, and at this time of the year it gets very snowy in Lincoln, um, and it suddenly starts snowing outside, you go, oh fuck. <laughs> because suddenly it starts snowing in your game, and all your crops get ruined, and you should starve. <laughs> so that's an interesting thing. I think it's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> probably. Also. Most of these games, you might know this is a bit weird, but that's the point, we're just doing them because it's fun. Um, and yeah, so the weather's going to affect the gameplay, so like if it's foggy, it's going to be really difficult to see, so you'll be able to hide from like guards and stuff, and you can like steal things and all that kind of stuff. Here's another one. Bees. <laughs> can you see now where I'm coming from with my pictures? I'm connecting things together. Uh, this is um, a game we're working with a guy called Andrew Deathridge, which is possibly one of the coolest names <laughs> imaginable. Um, and the idea is that you are a worker bee in a hive, and you have to see if you, how long you can keep your hive alive for. And so when it's raining, there's going to be massive like bolts of water just dripping through the sky, and you're like, oh my god, you've got to dart around them to collect nectar. When it's sunny, nectar's going to be really prevalent, you can go around and collect it. But winter, it'll be very, very difficult to get any sort of food for your hive, so you've got to prepare for it. We'll get ready, and so it'll be a high score table for whoever lasts the longest in terms of protecting that hive. Should be quite nice. And we're hoping that it'll also, we're going to have a lot of information in there to be like, save the bees, guys. We need them. Honey is good. And so on and so forth. Did you know they eat bees in Japan? And like honey. That's gross. I found that out recently in a video. Here's another one. This is amazing. It's a guy called Jordan Bird. <laughs> and he's working on a game about Twitter, which there's, there's birds in it. And the idea is that um, the birds are going to they're, they're going to be generated based on the emotional like the emotions that you get from inside the tweets. So you have a tweet for a certain hashtag that none of us probably don't really want to talk about. And um, then you'll have this nasty bird that's sort of hunched over and yelling at everyone. <laughs> That kind of bird. Um, or you might have a nice bird, which is like around being really happy, and then the really nasty bird comes along and stabs it in the eyes. And that's so on and so forth, and that should be a really interesting uh, little experience. Probably won't be much of a game, but it'll be nice to look at. And it'll be a cool, cute visualization of everything that goes on around Twitter. Um, right now, the birds kind of look like, um, well, what, what did you describe them as? A cross between a dragonfly and an airplane. Because they're just made out of like primitive objects right now, but we're going to be painting like bird objects, you know, they're going to be quite nice, it's going to look really pretty. And hopefully, we're going to get that shown at Game City next year, that'll be quite nice. Uh, there's another one. So, in the year 2037, um, I just made up that number this morning. Um, mankind has been enslaved by Wikipedia as it's become too intelligent and it's grown self aware. And essentially, what you have to do is you have to fly around as Wiki uh, in, in real time Wikipedia updates. They'll pop up as little nodes, and you have to come in and shoot them all. And Wikipedia in the center is going to like, send out like viruses and stuff to try and take you down. It's sort of much like a 3D shooting up kind of game. Where, so each of those like little uh, laser, laser. Uh, you see each of these like little nodes. Yeah. So I'm just gonna Nod, say yes. 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 <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, so each one of those is a uh, Wikipedia edit. And um, depending on like how many like words and characters and stuff that get edited will depend on the size of the uh, cube that you can destroy. Negative edits will create like black holes which will try and suck you in. And also like whenever a new user is registered, that's when an enemy will appear to try and hang you down. 
And that happens quite often. There's about 72 edits a minute on Wikipedia. So this is going to be quite a hectic little game. <laughs> it's much better than the original idea we had, where you play as an MI6 agent trying to find little um, edits in real-time Wikipedia pages, and you're playing as a Wikipedia moderator. It's dull as dishwater. <laughs> <laughs> we were hoping it would have sort of like a papers, please kind of vibe, but it was just so boring. <laughs> Couldn't be doing with it, so we were like, yeah, let's make a game where you can shoot stuff. Um, this one is a game that came out of a conversation between Ashley Bledhood and me and Jake. Oh God, this one. Yes! This one! Yes! Jake, this one! Oh I'm assuming you've all read that and I don't need to actually say anything. Um, It's a Doom style shooter. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Um, I've got this recorded, I need to edit this. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a podcast, it's hilarious. Um, yeah, so it's a Doom style shooter set in the depths of the second circle of hell, and the idea is that every time someone watches a video on Pornhub, then a monster will be created and you have to take it out. Problem is that there's probably more monsters than bullets in the world. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't think it worked. I don't even know if there's an API. Um, I did send a tweet to uh, Paul Katie. Katie. Yeah, I don't know if I know. Um, and I was like, do you have an API? And they never got back to me. <laughs> Probably because half of them don't know what an API is. But, um, but I think it'd be fun. I just think it'd be hilarious. If, I can, if there is an API, then I'll be making this game at some point in the next year. Just, just, fun, just for fun. Yeah, so uh, cool APIs that there are existing in the world. So there's Google Maps, um, that's always fun. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, that one's always really a staple. I use that one quite often now. Um, there's Weather Data APIs, there's Foursquare, there's Wikipedia, there's the BBC. If you wanted to make a game, did anyone, has anyone played a, the other game by Lucas Pope, The Republic of Times? Anyone played that one? So in that game, um, it's set in the, the fictional country of Republia, which is next to Ostolska. Um, and essentially, you are the editor of a newspaper, and you have to drag in certain articles. And depending on what articles you put in, will affect the way that people view like the state. So you can put in certain ones to incite rebellion, or you can put in ones to make them more subservient or warmongering. So it'd be cool to get actual real-time articles and put, make something out of that. Tumblr, less about that one, better. Um, the Guardian, also news it, new stuff. Um, Eventbrite, I don't know if you can make a game with that. Um, I think. Uh, I think it'd be quite interesting to make something with that. Um, flight status and flight tracking API. We made a very morbid game with this uh, game jam once, um, using GPS locations and uh, flight data, where you would be um, walking along. And your phone would go off, and you'd be like, "What's this? What's going on?" And it turns out that there's a plane getting very, very close to you, and it's going to crash <laughs> right on top of you. And you have to run as quickly as you can. So you've got to run, you've got to leg it, and you've got to get out of this certain like crash area. Meanwhile, there is an actual plane flying above you, and you can hear it, <laughs> and you're going, shit, 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 shit. And you've got to get out, and then you're like, "Okay, got it." And another plane. And then another plane comes because it's actually surprising, there's surprisingly quite a lot of airplane. <laughs> I feel so sorry for anyone who was playing that game outside East Midlands Airport. <laughs> but yeah, that was about to be made for a game jam. Um, NASA has some APIs which are kind of cool. I'd love to make something with that at some point because like, you can get access to satellites and stuff. Um, and then there's a lot of government data. Um, recently, I saw some, something went on Twitter where. Um, the government have like a website where you can just type in anything and it gives you like the political layout of anyone who's interested in it. Yeah. That'd be cool for a game. <laughs> think about it. I can't think of anything right now, but I'm sure it could be used for a game. That's what I do. Um, pros and cons of using APIs. So um, you get access to a bucket load of really random data and it's really fun to work with these kind of things. Um, and real-time changes will affect the game in really wonderful ways that you're never going to be able to expect. So for example, with the weather games, we don't know when it's going to snow, we don't know when it's going to rain. We don't know if the game's going to be fun, if it's like snowing constantly for like two months. So we, we don't know whether that's going to work, but it's part of using that kind of data. 
Um, and it's probably, it's not normally used for games, so you probably do something that someone has never ever done before, so you're like breaching the ground and stuff. And it's very, very gimmicky, but very, very fun. Um, and it's really good for, for like doing procedural generated things. Um, cons, uh, you can only call a lot of free APIs and paid APIs as well, and a certain amount of times per minute or per hour. With uh, Twitter, we call Twitter every 15 seconds with hashtag dungeon. Um, which apparently is a long time for people to wait. So when they make a new dungeon and it hasn't appeared within a split second afterwards, they're sitting there going, what is this? Why does this take you so long? I cannot wait for more than 10 seconds. So um, we've had to put like, a, little, a little warning into the game saying, can you give it a minute, please? You know, just like, wait for our servers to pick it up. Um, also, uh, the API owner might change the way things work at any point. Halfway through testing hashtag dungeon, Twitter changed the entire way that its API worked, so you had to spend like three days working on stuff to get it working again. Um, also, the API, API owner might just stop supporting it and get rid of it, so you've always got a backup plan. So with hashtag dungeon, we store all of our data on the server before we pick it up on Twitter. So just in case Twitter did decide to like, disappear tomorrow, we'd be fine. Not everyone would be fine, but we'd be fine. Um, <laughs> And also, it's not that easy to make a game that follows a particular narrative of this kind of thing, because it, it's just, you cannot tell what's going to happen when, especially with like, the weather ones. So yeah, any questions on this particular thing? Yeah, go for it. Um, did you ever consider kind of reversing the flow of data for hashtag dungeons so that uh, popular hashtags would generate enemies so that we can actually go in and actually slay Kim Kardashian's ass? <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> or, or the hashtag that dare not speak yeah, Well, we did. We were going to like the original idea was to just use popular hashtags. Yeah. But it just wasn't really that academically interesting because we're just using it as a random seed. Yeah. Um, but we are planning on playing it into the game like now that we've finished the part, the research part of it because it's easy. Um, one thing we are putting in is so we can get the avatar, from the person. Um, and what we can do with that is we would make like a grayscale version of it, and like this, like this metal golem thing. <laughs> and so you can defeat whoever the avatar of whoever made the rooms avatar was like smashing. <laughs> so you, we could find like that particular hashtag, and you could kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I should have seen that. But yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, we, we we have lots of that. It's just it wasn't really that academically interesting. So yeah. Have you thought about exposing APIs from the games? Mm -hmm. Think about the feedback loop of games feeding into each other. Sadly, <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> mm -hmm. interesting. I haven't, but now I have. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just like a, this endless stream of APIs constantly calling on the How exciting! <laughs> that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be really, really awesome. Um, yeah, I haven't, but that would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange answer. Uh, any other questions? Yeah? Uh -huh. Should we all start tweeting the board hub accounts asking about APIs? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would really confuse them, and I think it'd be amazing. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> maybe we would, maybe we would actually get one out of them for that. They probably do have one. I'd be surprised if they don't. Yeah, they've got so much data, so I don't know. I would, I'd be surprised if they don't have something that I could tap into, but I just, I'm guessing it's not public. It's very private. Don't let me so lonely, eh? I do, I do have two copies. I guess, um, hands up if you want a copy. <laughs> you two can have copies, I guess, because you're the first ones hands up and I might give out some free ones on Twitter anyway later with the, with the video range hashtag so yeah. But I had to pay for this. You did have to pay for this. But I wanted <laughs> something out of this. Come on. How am I supposed to eat otherwise? Oh, never mind. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Yeah.